Hello, welcome to episode 29 of the Epic Film Challenge, 2001 movies you must see before you die. The year is 1966, the film is Andrei Rublev, directed by Andrei Tarkovsky. And this is a film I watched a few months ago uh, as part of a kind of collaboration series with um, uh, Joel Jolly Studio One, fellow YouTuber. We recommended each other a film and that was the one he recommended to me and so I watched it and I've done a whole 40 minute video about it, which was more of a kind of stream of consciousness thoughts of the films I was going along. but. Uh, Tarkovsky is a director who is very much respected and hailed as one of the all-time greats, a Russian filmmaker, and this is one of his many you know, masterpieces, some people would say. It's the only film I've seen from him so far. Um, I'm not sure if any of his other films are in the book, I'm sure there probably is at least another one. But uh, nevertheless, Andrei Rublev was a real-life painter, a Renaissance painter, I believe, or at least you know, hundreds of years ago. And this film tells his life story in a way. Well, not his life story, but we start when he's a young man, and then he's kind of an older man by the time we get towards the end of the film. And it's kind of told in parts. You have the, the film split up into sections in a way, and segments, I suppose, uh, which may or may not be handy depending on your perspective of it because the film is three and a half hours long. Uh, the introduction uh, scene was um, it kind of didn't really fit with the rest of the film, I thought. It just didn't seem to add to Andre's story, seeing as he wasn't even in it. Um, but there was something very intriguing about the way it was shot, and it definitely grabbed me. And the film looks gorgeous. It's shot in black and white and just... Uh, looks stunning. The cinematography in it is, is really great. There's some fantastic shots in the film that just really uh, add so much to what you're already seeing take place on screen and just seems to enhance the moments that are playing out in front of you by the way the camera is placed or is moving. Um, I, yeah, you know, Instantly as a director I was very impressed by Tarkovsky's work in this film, uh, the way that he put it all together. The performances are very good. Uh, and strong and it's a very gritty realistic feeling film of that era from hundreds of years ago a time that's so far removed from us now today you know the modern you know uh, technology and life and cars and all that stuff going back to those times hundreds of years ago where it's a completely different landscape and I think the film really captured that because it almost felt like I was looking at a film that was made back then, as if they'd somehow discovered and invented film 500 years ago uh, and had made this one film. Like, it felt that authentic to me. And it helps that I don't know any of the actors, I've never seen them before, and so you, I really was immersed in, in, in the world of it. But it is a long film, it did drag at times, um, but there's some really great moments in it, as I've already said. Uh, and I really liked seeing Rublev's journey and some of the scenes were just expertly done and, and just different ways of telling the story that I'd not thought about before or seen before I should say uh, and the one thing that always stands out to me unfortunately is the fact that in the film uh, they there's a big battle scene which is incredible but horses are involved and a horse gets killed and falls down a flight of stairs as it's dying and it's horrible to watch, and for me there's no excuse for that, there's absolutely no excuse for it, you know. I, I don't believe that trying to make a, a, a scene in a film believable to the point of actually killing an animal is worth it at all. Uh, and, and there's going to be some other stuff about animal abuse that's going to be uh, featured in this series. Unfortunately, I know there's a, a film in the book that, that has another similar controversial scene with an animal, which I'm really dreading, but... The horse scene I just think was completely unnecessary, the, the film felt authentic enough, I don't think Tarkovsky needed to go to the lengths of actually killing a, a horse uh, on screen, you know, um, or at the very least I think they killed it after they'd stopped filming, but either way you see it in the process, you see like blood pouring out of his neck I think, it just, I'm trying to block it out already. To me it was inexcusable, uh, and it kind of really sullied the film a little bit, but Sometimes you have to look past these things and, and what is it really going to help to kind of hold a grudge over that the horse is long gone. You know, the, the people who made the film in some cases may be long gone. I know Tarkovsky isn't around anymore, but uh, yeah, it was a shame to see that, to be honest. Um, the film didn't need it. It didn't add anything to it, in my opinion. It just detracted from it, which was a shame. But overall, from, from bell to bell, uh, the film is a phenomenal piece of uh, capturing a time period you know I, 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 my words are getting jumbled up now but I just that's the most impressive thing about it and the film also contains to me 
probably one of the most um, beautiful deaths I've ever seen in a film. There's this character who gets um, who gets hit by an arrow as they're running away, and they stop. And as soon as they get shot, it goes into slow motion. It's this beautiful, like slow motion shot, and he kind of falls down into this stream, and then his body slowly starts to float away. And it's just it's just so impeccably done, and it's such it's one of the one of the great shots that I've seen in in film. Uh, and moments like that are littered throughout the film and, and give it an extra layer of uh, gravitas, I think. So, overall, it wasn't an easy, fun watch, but it was one that I appreciated. I appreciated the film and the everything that went into making it. Again, the whole thing was a shame, but it was what it was. What are you going to do about it? Um, just have to deal with it, I suppose. And it is a film I would watch again. Is it a film you must see before you die? That's an interesting question. Uh, it always is an interesting question. Uh, I don't know that it is. I really don't. Because while there were things in it that were, that were great, and I thought, wow, that was an amazing shot, or that was an amazing moment, uh, I feel like I have seen, you know, not moments that are, that are exactly the same and have the exact same effect as moments in Andrei Rublev, but moments that have an impact and are done in a, a cool way I've seen in plenty of other films so I don't know whether I can actually say yes I, I think it's a masterpiece, I really do, I think it's fantastic but I, I, I don't know if you need to see it before you die and I'm not even bringing the horse into this but um, as I think about it now, a couple of months after seeing it, it's more just moments that stand out as opposed to the entire film itself I suppose maybe that's a uh, reason that I'm kind of holding back on saying yes. I mean, obviously, if you're a cinephile and you love films and you want to see all the greats, then it's an absolute yes. But I'm trying to judge it on a bit more of a broader plane than that, I think. Even though there's films that I know that the general public are never going to watch from this book. Never, including this film. You know, I, There's people I know in my life, my friends, who would never sit through a three and a half hour long black and white Russian film set in, you know, the hundreds of years ago. So is Andrei Rublev a film you must see before you die? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Um, and again, it ain't to do with the horse. I, I just feel like, you know, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe it's a yes. I, I, I mean, why not, why not include this? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna edit this out. Um, sometimes you can't decide. And I don't really like to think about it much before I turn the camera. I like to be to be very free and just whatever it is in my thoughts. But it's a real tough one. I almost want to just say yes and no. Because um, my mind jumps to Seven Samurai in terms of a film that's set hundreds of years ago and feels completely authentic. And that film does. But then you have actors who you recognize from other films. And so it's not completely immersive in that respect. But then again, you know, is that really something that, that should be... Uh, considered an impressive feat that you have actors who people 50 years after you've made the film are not going to recognize. I don't think that's really factors into it. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say yes, actually. I just, just thinking about it now, more scenes come to mind, the way that it's shot and, and uh, you know, the story of Andrei Rublev. It is slow, though. It, it's not, you know, it's not, uh, ah, it's hard, man. It's really hard. It's really hard. Um, is it a film you must see before you die? I'm going to say no, but you should probably check it out anyway. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to stick to my guns on that because I feel like a film like Seven Samurai just is more enjoyable and, and more impressive in a way that deals with a similar kind of older time period and feels kind of authentic. I don't know. I'm, I'm ranting complete bollocks here. I thought this would be a lot easier, but... It is what it is. My final verdict, should you see Andrew Rublev, is it a film you must see before you die? No, as I said, but you should probably watch it anyway. Yeah, I'm still undecided, but thanks for watching.